Please note that this is documentation of actual historical events and people. Some details are disturbing and listener caution is advised. Much of the information about this event still remains confidential due to the brutality of the events. The diary extracts and entries used were obtained with the consent of the next of kin. May 1933 Just off of the Obi River in West Siberia, in the Soviet Union, one of the most horrific ordeals in human history would take place. 6,700 Russian prisoners were deported to Nadano Island, a small island in the middle of the harsh Siberian wilderness. They were sent there, under instruction of Stalin, and ordered to construct a special settlement. They were told they had to cultivate the island, using minimal equipment or agricultural knowledge. The deportees were abandoned with only scant supplies of flour for food, little to no tools, and virtually none of the clothing or shelter necessary to survive. Guards would patrol the three kilometers coast of the island by boat, killing anyone that tried to escape instantly. Many on the island would starve to death, freeze, or be murdered by other prisoners. The Nadano project would only run for around three months, yet of the 6,700 that arrived, only around 2,000 would leave. They left with trauma, scars, and mental pain that would never leave them, but most harrowingly, of a story as well. A story of one man in particular who became an urban legend on the island, Kukla Kilovec, the doll man. Alexander Spivanov was only 22 years old when he was sent to Nadano Island. He had been arrested for theft in St. Petersburg in 1932, and a year later found himself on the train to Western Siberia. Petra and Valentina Malyshova, an older couple who worked as a teacher and a butcher respectively, who lived by the Obi River. In May 1933, they were caught harboring an early escapee of the island in their barn, and were ordered to return to the island alongside the prisoner. Vladimir Berezovji was a 29-year-old guard on the island. He was ordered to guard the island upon the beginning of the project in May 1933. Vladimir, Valentina, and Alexander were the only of the 6,000-plus people on Nadano Island to record a diary of their experiences in this hell, that could be found as of 2023. Their documentations show us the true horror and terror that anyone unfortunate enough to be in this place would suffer. The following is an accumulation of selected relevant entries from all three, that paints the picture of Nadano Island and the doll man its evil nature spawned. These entries will be shown as an English translation. Vladimir Berezovny, Guard, Entry 1, May 12, 1933 We finally tracked the escaped prisoner today. We saw the man swimming across the river late last night. My general ordered for me to fire at him but it was too dark to see anything, we watched his silhouette crawl to the bank and run off into the dark forest. The general was furious, screamed so loud at us on the boat, likely the whole island heard his yells. We searched all through the night, but the darkness aided his escape. We began to theorize he'd have died of hypothermia due to these freezing temperatures, but the search continued. We found him this morning, in an old couple's barn. He had a fresh blanket around him and a bowl of food, it was obvious they'd been sheltering him purposely. She was a teacher I believe? Both in their forties. Maybe fifties. I didn't get the details myself. He was a butcher for the local village, they may struggle with a lack of animal produce for a while, 
I suppose that's the village's problem now. They were a nice couple, very cooperative, but rules are rules and they had to be taken to Nadano alongside the escaped one. Valentina Malis Hova, Teacher, Entry 1, May 13, 1933 I've always tried to be a loving woman. For my husband Petr, for the children of my class, but this place is draining me. I do not regret my actions, nor do I hold that poor man accountable. I would feed and shelter him 100 times over if I could. My poor Petr warned me against it however, and I worry he will attribute the hell we have been sent to as being my fault. That he will never forgive me. He acts like he is fine, but I can tell he is not. He worries for me greatly, the men on the island look at any woman like they are a pack of wolves. I've seen my first dead body this morning. It looks like a young man, beaten to death, over food I would imagine. I write this not as a journal, but more as a last letter. I am not sure of how long I will survive here, Petra I love you. My children in the school, I love you too. Alexander Spivanov, Prisoner, Entry 1, May 15, 1933 I have not had a chance to write yet. We have been here six days. I would say 200 deaths already. Many died on the train over from the cold. Some have had illness and died in their sleep. They are the lucky ones I think. I have made a small shelter in the wooded area. There are groups of people around me too. Not enough room for all of us here. Hunger is settling in for many, not a scrap to eat for about a week. More like two or three weeks in most cases. I had a bowl of soup before we left St. Petersburg, and I still feel my stomach eating itself. The women on the island have already started to sell their bodies for what food there is, small rodents that have been caught or berries. Some women are even being pimped out by the more vicious men on the island, food is now currency, the guards look on doing nothing. Humanity has abandoned us. Valentina Malishkova, Teacher, Entry 2, May 20th, 1933. I worry a lot now. Not as much as Patcher, however. He spends most nights awake completely. A lot of the men on the island have started pimping out the women. If they say no, they do as they please anyway. I think they may even be eating them. Pet regards me all the time, he sees how the men look at me. I am not sure how much longer we can survive here, if this journal gets out, please end help. I love you Petr. I love you kids. Vladimir Berezgovnoy, Guard, Entry 2, May 24, 1933 we were forced to kill more attempted escapees these last few days. I shot two men and one woman, but that is not even the most harrowing events that have happened recently. Murders have gone up on the island, lots of them we can only theorize are motivated by robbery of food. We were ordered not to intervene, it is their own society. There is something lurking on the island at night too. One of the prisoners we suspect, we shine lights at him, but the tree line seems to cover him fairly well. Unsure so far if he is responsible for the murders or if they're the gangs that seem to have formed. Alexander Spivanov, Prisoner, Entry 2, May 26, 1933 there is a monster on this island. I thought I had seen the worst of humanity. I was wrong. We hear screams most of the nights we've been here. That's normal. 
But what happened last night was harrowing. Mere meters from my shelter, amongst the trees, I heard meat being cut. I kept quiet but maintained by interest. I could hear various squishes and squelches of what sounded like an animal being carved. This lasted a few hours. By morning when I thought the coast was clear, I investigated. It was no animal. A man, early thirties maybe, although it was hard to tell, it was hard to tell as he had no skin. He'd been completely skinned, just his red flesh being exposed. He was hung up on one of the trees, ropes tied around each of his wrists about 6 m up in the air. His pale, tattooed skin was displayed next to him like a flag. A banner almost. I don't know what monsters have been made by this island to be capable of doing something like this. But I cannot believe it. Vladimir Berezgovnyi, Guard, Entry 3, May 30, 1933. It gets worse every day. The prisoners have now started calling this monster the Doll Man. This is the fifth display he has made now. He kills other prisoners on the island. Usually gang-affiliated prisoners, typically fit males. He skins them, presumably dead, before displaying them tied up in the tree line. He displays their skin too, almost as a warning. Some of the prisoners have started making up stories about him, calling him the doll man, it's caught on amongst us guards too. They say he makes these men his dolls, as he is lonely on the island. Nothing is confirmed and we have no suspects, we are not instructed to conduct an investigation anyway. Probably for the best, none of the guards would dare step off the boat. The Kukla Kilovac, doll man, quickly became a legend, not just on Nadano Island, but all around Russia after the horrors of the island got out. One of his dolls is still preserved in a museum in St. Petersburg. Many have theorized on which of the prisoners could be capable of this atrocity. Some speculated it was a gang, due to the gang-affiliated nature of the victims. Others thought he could be a serial killer from one of the prisons, that had decided this was the chance to continue some of his work. But there is one theory that has presented itself very recently, and it relies on the final entry from Valentina Malasheva's diary. Please note, the handwriting of this entry did not match that of any of the other entries. Valentina Malis Hova, Entry 2, May 22, 1933 Cannibalism Eating the flesh of a fellow human she never deserved to be here, it was her kind heart that got her here. They assaulted her, in so many different ways, and forced me to watch. Then they left nothing else of her. Cannibals. Monsters. Monsters breed monsters. Hell spawns demons. Death would be a sweet escape for them now. For anyone here. So they will be immortalized, as my toys. Immortalized to warn any of the other monsters here that the devil lurks among them. I suppose, skinning a human will be no different to skinning a pig. Not that they're worth more than a pig anyway. I love you Valentina.